Now, keep in mind that we have a full class on this. If you check the website, you'll be able to see where these classes are being given throughout the country. Now, in the full class, we have time to get into everything in detail, how to take out spots, how to remove the stains from the poster, how to apply the protector, show you how to mix the products, how to do the deodorizing. In this little overview, we don't have time to get into everything in great detail, but we're going to give you just an overview of some of the exciting things in this class. Now, I'm very excited about upholstery because of the huge potential that's out there for it. Only 35% of the professional carpet cleaners actually clean upholstery. That is, in itself is amazing. So tremendous market from that perspective because so few professionals actually do it. The other exciting thing is if you go to your yellow pages, nowadays you have to go online for yellow pages. Some of the older people will understand when I mentioned yellow pages, the old book that we used to have. But when you go to the yellow pages and you go under carpet cleaning and you count the number of carpet cleaners in your city, then you go to furniture sales stores. You go to carpet sales stores. You count the number of carpet sales stores and the number of furniture sales stores. And it's mind boggling. There's two to three times more furniture sales stores than there are carpet sales stores. So the market is just unbelievably large. This is really fantastic great opportunity for us. So I urge you to really take a close look at this. Everyone's trying to figure out, well, how do I up my income? Well, post cleaning could be the perfect way to do this. That's what's so great about it. And when we start talking about upholstery, one of the key things to understand is the customer's expectations. What are they expecting? And we need to be able to communicate to the customer what we can and cannot do. Very important. Now, our relationship with the crew, with the customer and the crew, the, the relationship, really is the majority of the customer's satisfaction. So we need to make sure that we're in a uniform. A picture ID could be extremely helpful. Patches. When a customer sees a person in a uniform of patches, the patches mean that they took extra training. So keep that in mind. Having those IICRC patches, your trade association patch, that could all be very helpful to you. Picture ID makes them feel very competent, reassured. When you're talking to the customer, remember, the majority of our customers are female. Look them in the eye. Give them three feet of personal space. Ask them what they're expecting and then let them know what you can do. And remember, our responsibility to clean it as best as possible without any texture loss or color loss. But we don't want to rub it so hard trying to get it clean that we put a hole in it. Also, we have to make sure that we explain to the customers. Some customers don't understand. They think that we could come in and clean that 10-year-old piece of furniture where they have eight kids, five cats, and six dogs that's never been cleaned before, and they think we can make it look like new. We also have to explain to them that the products we use are for post choice, and they're fantastic, nothing better, but they don't have fertilizer in them to make the fibers grow back. So we can't make something look like new that's been neglected. You'll be amazed that we could do, especially with the Pro's Choice products. Remember, Pro's Choice is unique because they're the company that put the science into cleaning. They came up with unique spotters, and what they did for upholstery cleaning is just mind-boggling how simple they made it and how they solved so many of our bar problems with upholstery cleaning. One of the other things is we want to make sure the property really insured. Now, 
a lot of times we cleaners don't understand insurance. Most insurance policies have a custom care and quality control clause. What that means is we're not insured for what we're working on. We're insured if we cause the house to catch on fire. We're insured if we break a lamp, but not for what we're working for. This is very important. Many companies will have a disclaimer where they tell the customer, we can't guarantee how this is going to turn out. It could shrink, it could brown. We're not responsible. The sad fact is, you are. The way the courts see a disclaimer is that we, the professional, knew there was something wrong. And instead of not doing it, we trick the customer into signing disclaimer. This is why disclaimers don't hold up in court. There's an old saying, the best job you could have is the one that you turn down. So if that customer is expecting the impossible, pass on. Let them know what you can do. Understand your insurance limitations. Very important. When we start dealing with upholstery, we run into a number of different fibers that they're made out of. The fibers are broken down into three categories. One is natural. Now, natural means it was from a plant or an animal. If it came from an animal, it's made of protein fibers. Example of this would be wool and silk. If it came from a plant, it goes by the term cellulose, meaning from a plant. This would be your cotton and your linen. And by the way, in furniture, large portions of furniture are cotton and linen. Then there's what is called man-made. This is your rayon, your acetate fibers. You don't find acetate too much in furniture. In rayon, we don't have that often because rayon doesn't really work very well in furniture. It turns dark when it's clean, and it just gets very weak. So we don't find much rayon anymore in furniture. Then there's the synthetics. This is made from the oil industry, where they actually take plastic and they melt it, and they push it through what's called a spinneret. A spinneret looks like a shower head. And they take this liquid plastic and push it through. And then the fibers that come out, they're called filaments. They use that for the man-made fibers. Now, commercially, there's a lot of furniture made of nylon. Not too much residential. Olefin, still very popular. Olefin, you'll find a lot, but they go by the brand name Herculon. Sometimes all of them is called polypropylene. Then one that is extremely popular is the polyester. Just about all of your microfiber is made out of this polyester. We're going to talk a little bit about polyester, but I'll give you a little idea. It's extremely, what they do when they make the microfiber, they make it extremely thin, thinner than silk. And they weave it where it's very difficult for moisture to penetrate, what oils do. We'll tell you about some of the fantastic chemistry pros trace came out where you're able to get in there and actually get this clean. And then there's the acrylic and then some of the newer polyesters. That's your synthetic fibers. But in upholstery, you usually have a blend of three or four different fibers. This makes it very difficult for us to determine what the fiber really is. See, with carpets, we go to the corner, we cut a little piece out, because you don't want to cut it out of the center of the rug, and we take a butane lighter. Butane lighters have no fragrance, and we burn them. We usually hold it with the tweezers, because we don't want to burn our fingers, and we watch the flame, the color of the flame. We smell. We see what the ash forms. And you'll be amazed how we're able to determine fibers. For example, for burning wool, it smells like burnt hair. If we're burning cotton, it smells like burnt paper. Olefin smells like asphalt. 
Acrylic smells like burnt meat. Polyester has a kind of sweet, fruity smell. So we're kind of able to tell what these fibers are. The challenges with upholstery, there are usually two or three or four fibers blended together. So when we do the burn test, it's very difficult to tell what it is. Now, in the fiber identification chart, you see where they have bleach. The chemical name for bleach is sodium hypochlorite that it dissolves wool and silk. That's important to know because we don't want to use bleach on furniture. Bleach could harm natural fibers. This is really a challenge because we have learned how to use the peroxides and carpet cleaning, but we're dealing with synthetics and they just make our world so much easier. But because of so many natural fibers and furniture, we're not able to use this fantastic new chemistry. So again, we would burn it. And if the fiber, when we burn it, if it's real powdery, we know it's a natural fiber. If it gets to a hard bead, we know it's synthetic. But again, unfortunately, a lot of times it's a blend, so we can't tell for sure what it is. One of the other problems, natural fibers could have a lot of different dyes in there. And these dyes could bleed. Now, what this term bleeding means is the color will run from one color to another color in a liquid state. There's also a term called cracking. This is where it rubs off, either wet or dry, onto another, onto a towel, onto your clothes, or your dye from your clothes could crack onto the furniture. These are a couple of challenges we could run into. So you're always taught to pre-test everything before we clean it. We want to make sure that we're not going to find ourselves with a problem. Jacquard's perfect example. Jacquard looks like a photo negative. They're prone to bleed at the very end of the drying cycle. That means when you're sitting at home, having that nice cold soda pop, at the end of the day, that's when it will bleed. So that's really a challenge. It's prints, uh, the welds, the dark colored deckings. All of these could be concerns for bleeding or color loss. Then when we talk about furniture, the soil. When we look at the soil, 74 to 79% of it is this dry particulate matter. That means it will extract out with a vacuum cleaner, dry soil removal, much easier than any other method. It doesn't dissolve. This is where a lot of professionals make the mistake. They go in, and they spray the furniture with the pre-spray, and they make mud. Whereas if they vacuumed it up, their job would be a lot easier. Matter of fact, when you take the class, we'll show you a little trick with this that could get half of your customers to want to have their furniture cleaned without you twisting their arm. They also will probably want their mattresses clean. I want you to think about that. You're going into the house to clean the front carpet, and half your customers have the furniture clean and half have the mattresses clean. What does that do to Hip Pocket National Bank? And you didn't twist their arm or threaten them. Uh, so make sure you come to class and learn that little trick. When we talk about soil, soil is usually on the acid side of the pH scale. So our cleaning agents are alkaline. They neutralize it. Just like if you eat spicy food, your stomach produces a lot of acid, you get a little bit of a tummy ache, so you take some Tums, which is an alkaline, to neutralize it. Well, that's what we're doing when we're cleaning. One of the problems with furniture is the dyes on furniture are also put on the acid side. So we can't use too high of an alkaline on it because we'll remove the furniture dye. So it's a lot different than even with carpet. The other thing when we deal with carpets, we have these fantastic penetrating agents, surfactants, to get into the fiber so that the cleaning agent gets in there. We can't do that with furniture because 
the furniture fabric's very thin and it could prolong the wetting and create problems for us. So a lot of unique, specially blended products had to be put together. A lot of unique chemistry for upholstery. pH. pH stands for the relative acidicity, alkalinity, or neutrality of your cleaning solution. And in furniture, this is very important because there could be fibers that will change color with the pH. Believe it or not, this here is a polar bear. There was an acid rain and it turned purple. So we run into that same challenge with the postry. We could go in and cleaning, and depending on what our cleaning agent is, it could cause fibers to just turn to a bright orange color, a green color. So we have to be very careful with our pHs. There's a lot of different cleaning methods. It gets a little confused especially the labels they put on the furniture. S for dry cleaning, X for vacuum only, W for wet cleaning. So we have to really be a little careful, but unfortunately, those labels that are put on there usually don't mean very much because it's a worker who's just slapping them on. I have been in a factory where the same piece of furniture is going and the lady is stamping different labels on each one. So we have to test everything. We can't go by that label. So again, we got to be very careful. S means solvent. W means wet clean. X means vacuum only. So again, we got to be very careful. Also remember that that label, when it talks about what the fiber is, is only talking about the stuffing. It, the filling material, not the actual face fiber. Dry cleaning. Now, dry cleaning in the past was used if they were worried about shrinkage, bleeding, or browning. It's a very safe method, but it never had the ability to really remove the soil. Matter of fact, in the IICRC classes, they used to tell you that you only can expect marginal results when you dry clean. It tells you you put your solvent on, you agitate it, you got to have a lot of safety precautions. Well, again, this is where this chemistry that Pro's Choice is famous for comes shining through. They developed a dry cleaning solution called a race. It could be used as a dry cleaning solution if you have a dry cleaning machine. It could be sprayed on and wiped on. This is a totally unique solvent that actually does a very thorough job of removing both dry soluble and wet soluble soils. Totally unique. So if you have a dry cleaning machine, this is just a, will, will give you results that will blow you away. If you have that real delicate piece of furniture, you're able to use this safely without worry and get extremely good results. Again, that's some real unique chemistry. Now, solvents mean that they don't contain water. So we need to make sure we have lots of fresh air, that we vent it outside. We don't smoke around solvents because they're flammable. But the reality, you shouldn't be smoking in the house anyway. We don't use immersible heaters because they have a lower flash point. You don't want to cause any fire. Your equipment should be properly grounded, but it should be properly grounded for cleaning with water. Otherwise, you could light up like a light bulb. And we use drop cloths so that we could wipe up anything that sprays. This should be for water-based, too. We just follow common sense. We want to make sure that if we're using a solvent that we have the proper respirator. Remember, the solvent isn't really that bad, but we're breathing a lot more in when we're doing it. It's just like the dentist with the x-rays. You get more x-rays from a color television than the what's happening from getting the teeth x-rayed, but because the dentist is exposed all the time, he or she has to step out of the room. So we need to protect ourselves because we use it a lot. Now, some of the methods out there, dry foam. This is a dense foaming detergent that's used that 
is put on the fiber, it's agitated in, it absorbs the soil into the foam so it can be taken away. The gentleman here is using a machine made by Bob Schrader, a very popular upholstery machine. Host has one similar. It does a safe job. Does it do a real deep cleaning? In the past, no. But again, with some of these advances in chemistries and pre-sprays, you could do a fantastic job with dry foam. You could also use a natural sponge or a horsehair brush. But this is where the dry foam cleaning has taken on a total different turn. Post Choice came up with this product called Amazing. And I'm really glad to say that I'm part of the reason why they had to do it. See, I was showing people how to spot with another product they have called PC45, which is just unbelievable. But you have to flush PC45 out. And they wanted something that didn't need to be flushed out. So the founder of the company, Clint Townsend, he's that crazy scientist who comes up with unique things. Well, he did. He came up with this product called Amazing Spot Free Rinse. This product is unbelievable on all sorts of spots and stains, but it revolutionized shampooing and dry foot cleaning. Let me show you a little video on this, and I'll give you an idea. Amazing rinse-free spot all is ideal for nearly any type of spot or stain. It's great for quick spotting because there's no need to rinse afterwards. Amazing spot all has the legendary pros choice anti-wicking and anti-soiling agents built in. If you have a problematic reappearing spot, Amazing spot all is your answer. With a nearly neutral pH, Amazing spot all is all fiber safe. Watch as we remove coffee, grease, shoe polish and lipstick from nylon carpet. The process is simple. Just wet the spot, then gently but thoroughly agitate the area. The Pro's Choice Carpet Shark is ideal for this purpose. When you encounter a stain that cannot be removed with Amazing Spot All, don't worry. Simply refer to the Pro's Choice Stain Removal Guide for severe stain removal procedures. The stain guide is available at www.proschoice.com. After agitating the spot to release the contaminants, press a folded absorbent white towel into the area to pick up the contamination. You should expect that more difficult spots such as lipstick and mascara may require a second application with a little more dwell time to fully dissolve the contamination. Here is a before and after shot for your comparison. You'll find that Amazing Spot All is also a great answer for furniture. Amazing Spot All can be used as a spotter and as a dry foam cleaner. You can clean upholstery using two different methods. Mist Amazing Spot All onto the fabric as shown here. Agitate gently and then absorb the soil with a dry white towel. As an alternative, you can also use Amazing Spot All as a dry foam cleaner. Prepare your foam by whipping the Amazing Spot All solution with a brush or better yet, by the aeration method we're using here. Apply the foam with a soft brush or sponge. Agitate gently and wipe away the soil with an absorbent towel. Amazing Spottle is truly the go-to product for professionals. Now, this amazing spotter, when used in a bond throttle machine, day night difference. I have a bond throttle. Was amazed. Been using it with an orbital with the bonnet pads. Truly amazing results. Doesn't have to be flushed out. Using it as a shampoo, unbelievable. And when they whipped up the foam, what they did. The aerator that they took is from a, a uh, fish tank where it blows the air in. It makes this beautiful foam. 
But what's so unique about it is how many stains it will remove. It is really a fantastic product and leaves, does not leave any residue. So that is something that just revolutionized furniture cleaning. Hot water extraction, that's the method most professional cleaners prefer because you're flushing everything away. We normally, the fabric is preconditioned, it's agitated and flushed with a solution. A lot of the new tools out there have really helped at preventing the overwetting. So there's some really fantastic new tools that have come onto the market. And they're made by numerous companies, everything from CFR to Sapphire Scientific to Hydromaster, some really great tools out there that will clean furniture without leaving them very well. And drying is very important. You want to make sure you have air movement, but not blowing directly on it. You want to get the air circulating because if it blows directly on it, you could get watermarks. You want to be careful not to get that. But don't worry, when you come to the whole class, we'll show you how to get rid of watermarks and how to get rid of those stains that you run into, like on mattresses and work there too. So we'll show you some really neat things. And when you speed the drain, you eliminate this problem of browning. Now, in furniture, Browning, because many of the fibers are from a plant, is true cellulose browning. That's your reaction with the pH and the ligand. That's the sugar that binds the fiber together. It's a sugar-like substance. I, by getting it dry fast, you eliminate that problem. You've got to be careful around the decking, the piping, the crevices. This is where these tools come in very handy. You also want to be careful around the metal buttons that you don't get any rust. Uh, this is where Pro's Choice stands out. They have a very safe, gentle rust remover. Some of the rust removers have a skull and crossbone, and that skull and crossbone does not mean that they're for pirates. The Pro's Choice one is much safer. Then we get into the protector. Oh, I can't stress this enough. Did you know that numerous studies have been done that showed that when a cleaner sells protector, they quadruple their income. That means increases their profit by four times. In another study shown, and by the way, this study actually it was five different studies that all had the same results by five different companies. They show that when a cleaner asked, just ask the customer if they would like a protector, 40% buy. But here's the unique thing. When you take the time and demonstrate and explain how it works, that goes up to 80%. Think how much more that could increase your profit. A lot of different protectors out there. Pro's Choice has two fantastic ones. They both work by repellency. That's the key with furniture. See, with carpet, you can seal the fibers so they can wipe it out. But with furniture, you want the repellency so the stain's not able to get in. They have two great ones, one which is solvent-based, meaning no water, and the other which is water-based. Now, the unique thing about the water-based one, and again, this is where this chemistry comes into play. They put in special products, because in the past with water-based ones, we ran the risk of colors running. They put in special color guard that locks the dye in. Totally unique. And by the way, both of these polymers, they have the special polymer that repels the stain, but it's soft and flexible, so it moves with the furniture, giving continuous protection. Very unique in that way. And it protects against the dry soil, protects against the oily soil from the back of your head, your arms, and it protects against the spills, the coffee, the Kool-Aid, the tea. Superior job of protecting. Now, when we go in to do that furniture, we want to pre-inspect. We want to test to see if the color is going to bleed. We want to look for shoe polish where people put their feet on it. We want to look for stains, for damage. Has the cat been scratching at it? We want to check all of this. Now, usually I do that pre-inspection while I'm vacuuming. 
Also be careful. I mean, this picture here says it all. Any size sofa for $39.95. Now, here's a very interesting fact. In the United States, the average price to clean a sofa is $89.95. That's average. That means half the people charge less, half the people charge more. The average price for a post protector is $49.95. Think about that. If you learn these little tricks in the class, where 80% of your customers buy a protector for a little bit of squirting, you just literally almost doubled your sale. Very profitable. Now, here, what they did is they put a drop cloth down to protect the furniture. Also, when you come to the class, we'll show you a couple of little tips. Like if it's a height of bed where the metal touches the sofa, or if you have the dust cover to keep dust, the rust from getting on the carpet, or the black cover from coming on to it. So when you come to the class, we'll show you a couple of little tricks how to protect yourself from that way. We always do our color fast test. Now, this is where this chemistry, again, just comes right out. Pro's Choice developed a product called Color Stabilizer. Now, what this gentleman's doing here, he's doing a little test. He's wetting. He's checking the cushions to see if there's any marks. He's seeing if there is any color bleed. Then he's, while he's doing this, he vacuums. I call it dry soil extraction. This is where we remove 74 to 79% of that dry soil. Then we pre-spray it with the color stabilizer. Now, I pre-spray everything with the color stabilizer. It's very inexpensive, and I do it for a very important reason. I don't have to worry. It solved all my problems. It locked the dyes in. It also enhances the color. It keeps it from browning. Fantastic product. I just missed it on and go over with my horsehead rush. That way I don't have anything like this. Uh, by the way, Ron Tony gave this a unique name. He calls this kill. <laughs> That's because he had to buy it. <laughs> and it was very expensive. So you spray the upholstery, work it in with the color stabilizer. Now, if you have a lot of grease and oil, you know, sometimes you run into those situations where they use some crazy stuff on the hair that puts some real heavy grease on it, or you got kids like mine that decided to put the bicycle on the couch to fix the chain, then we have a couple fantastic products to break that down. One is a Citric Quick, and the other is a One Mess. Both do a very great job of getting rid of that grease when you run into that situation. You just spray it on, take a white towel, rub it, it comes right off. Now, Pre-sprays. Carpets, we call them traffic lane cleaners, upholstery pre-sprays. The workhorse of our industry, they break down all that heavy soil to make our job easier. There's this product called Ultra TLC. Now, the color stabilizer is called Step 1. The Ultra TLC is called Step 2. This is a neutral pH. Friendly on all fibers, silk, all fibers. It suspends and emulsifies the soil, lifts it right off the fiber. Uh, matter of fact, little secret. If you do rugs, that color stabilizer locks the dyes in the oriental rugs. This pre-spray works on all oriental rugs, silk rugs, and sizal rugs breaking down the soil, loosening it, emulsifying it. And then, and you just put it on and just agitate it in. And then, this is probably one of the most unbelievable products you could ever find. It's called Natural Fiber Cleaner, the step three. This does not have an offensive odor. In the past, when they tried to come up with products like this, they used a sodium metal by sulfite, which would make people actually regurgitate, barf, uh, choke them. 
this does not have that odor at all. It rinses all the soil away. It stabilizes the color and enhances it. It prevents the browning. Does an extremely thorough job of cleaning. Could be used on fringes of carpets, all types of rugs, especially sizal carpets, but all furniture to extract and do a fantastic job of cleaning safely. So they made it so easy. Step one, step two, step three. What more could you ask for? But don't forget the fourth step. That's the protector. That quadruples your profit. So they made the furniture cleaning extremely easy if you have hot water extract. Made it extremely easy if you shampoo or dry foam. Now, I kind of am a little crazy. I like to put on a show. I dry foam at first. Then I go through my step two and step three. I always use step one just as an insurance but I use that arm shrouded machine. Why? I make a lot of beautiful suds, and the women are like, ooh, wow, I'm putting on a show for it. Plus, I do a very good job, and I sell a protector. Now, I'll tell you, I'm very proud because when I take the time and show them how it works and explain, I'm much higher than 80% on my sale rate for protector. And you will be too if you just take your time and explain to the customers. And believe me, $49 to treat a sofa that's taking you literally five minutes to do, that's some real good margins, real good return on your investment. I use the low moisture tool. I get the whole piece. I take my time and clean it. If there's any texture to it, I rake it afterwards. I use a carding brush and comb it so that I get everything moved in the right direction. With these new low moisture tools, I don't have to do any of this crazy stuff here. You see, without the low moisture tool, you have to take your vacuum. Got to be real careful on the piping. And keep in mind, when you come to class, we'll show you additional pictures, some things to watch out for. We'll get into a lot more detail. And again, like I said, that four step, Applying the protector, <clears throat> whichever one you choose, the water or the solvent, both are fantastic protectors. Both do an extremely efficient job. Remember, always groom it, does an extremely good job. A lot of times I take a white towel and wipe the furniture as a final step with that white towel before putting my protector on. That way, if there's any soil that I might have missed, I'm able to get it into that towel. Then I put my protector on and groom it in. Uh, when you dry it, you lay your pieces down. You don't want them touching. Use some walk-off paper or block to go in between. Don't put them on the actual sofa because the brown color could wick up. I always put walk-off paper there just as a safety precaution. When you come to the class, you get a copy of this slide. Tells you everything you need for upholstery. All the tools makes it very easy. You got a nice little checklist. So you can set up your standard operating procedures where you check your vehicle to make sure you have the right equipment and the right cleaning agents. Remember, right here, we're professionals. We'll call them chemicals, but we're in the house cleaning solution, cleaning agents. We don't want to use that word chemical because that could sound a little harsh to the customer. Also, don't forget with Pro's Choice, you have the stain guide. You can get it on your iPhone. You can get it on your Android, on your iPad. This is just an unbelievable app. So if you ever run into that spot in stain, it tells you exactly how to get rid of it. Nothing could be better. Also, don't forget that you could call Pro's Choice during normal business hours. Now, they are on the West Coast, so normal business hours is 8 to 4, and there'll be someone there to help you. They do a fantastic job. You could go online to their website, or you could go right to your app on your phone. 
Now, I urge you to go to their website, find an upholstery class near you, take it. You're going to get some tips. You're going to discover a lot of little things, a lot of little tricks that could really set you apart from your competition. So remember, only 35% of the cleaners clean upholstery, and there's three times more upholstery stores out there than there are carpet sales stores, furniture stores. So the opportunity is unbelievable. So let's go out there and make some money. And I want to thank you all for your time here. And if you ever have any questions, call Pro's Choice. Have a very nice evening. Thank you. Bye.